Here is our finished product. So this second arm that was here, I got rid of. And you can see that I've inset the nut and washer inside here because I cannot allow for it to stick out to touch the wall. There needs to be enough space that it, it just can't touch. I made these changes, of course, off camera. But what I can do is I can show you a cross section. So I'm gonna do a section and you can see here uh, what's going on. So basically, uh, when this vehicle hits a bump, this is going to move upward, and the chain will, of course, follow. And the point of this is to keep the chain taut. So I'm going to need to add some sort of spring or a dampener or something that's gonna be adding some pressure to this. Off camera, you can see that I've made yet another edit to the suspension arm here. And so as you can see, the suspension arm is now higher. And the reason for that is because when the chain moves upward, I don't want it to get caught down here. I want it to be able to have a lot of room to stretch upward. So what that would look like is the, the chain, instead of being all the way down here, would come across and would eventually come back over the other side, which we are yet to do. Now, before we do that, the next thing that we need to work on is we need to open up uh, this uh, suspension arm because we need to create the this arm on the other side as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the spindle just on its own. And what we need to do is take a dimension. So what I'm going to do is set this to be visual style wireframe and I'm gonna place the wheel right here, right where I want it to be. And now I'm gonna measure an angle between, let me get out of wireframe. I'm going to measure an angle between this bottom line, this angle right here, and that's going to be 116. So what we wanna do is we wanna create the same thing on the other side. So it's 116 uh, degree angle. Now that we have our single arm created, I wanna add a second arm. What I've done is create the same sketch again, and now I have an angle here. And this second arm is going to be able to add a second uh, cylinder, a second um, roller. So I'm going to finish my sketch here. And if you're wondering how I made this, basically what I did was I just took this original sketch and I just rotate it around this point with the same size hole and set an angle. And now I have two arms coming off of the same spindle. So uh, this is what we're left with. And as you can see in my main assembly, I have this arm holding two of the idlers for the suspension system. And these are both mated uh, correctly. So what I can do is show you in the analysis um, a cross section of what's going on inside here. As you can see, I have the arm, which is this purple section here and it's basically clamping down on the two cylinders. And between them are these two screws, of course, and I have the closed bearings as we've used um, a couple of times before. And you can also see the, the lock nuts locking in there, locking the screw down. So if I show you this from the side view and I turn off my analysis, um, you can actually see the way that the suspension is supposed to work. Um, basically what happens is when the vehicle goes over a bump or something like that, uh, this arm is going to move upward and the chain is going to follow it because the chain is under tension. Um, once that happens, you're gonna see that this top roller pushes the, the top of the chain up um, in order to keep the tension. So uh, basically, um, 
what you're doing in effect is you're allowing to have uh, tension on the chain no matter where um, no matter how high up this is when the when the tension is taken off of this area it's transferred to the top area of the chain so basically when this bottom part of the chain moves up this top part of the chain moves up as well now what we want to do is we want to add this to the other side and again I'm actually I'm not even sure if this method is going to work I'm not a hundred percent sure but this is a method that I want to try I want to see if it's possible to do this so um, this is what I, I want to go with for now and eventually uh, this sort of thing will need to be tested so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to add another hole to the gray part the body of this vehicle so that way I could have this whole assembly on this side as well and then I'll have two of them I'll have basically two of these assembly and that's going to allow for two different suspensions um, one on either side um, for this thing to function you can see I've selected all the parts of my suspension arm and so what I want to do now is I want to basically copy and move this entire assembly so I'm going to right click and copy and when I paste what it's going to do is it's going to recreate all these parts and I can simply move all of these parts over to this other hole which I've made so basically I made a second hole here in the body that way I can mount this piece so what we want to do is we want to place this um, as well as we can over the hole and we want to um, stick it in place uh, fairly accurately and we also want to spin um, the the entire assembly um, to the way that it's going to be in real life we're gonna leave it like that and we're gonna hit OK And that is our suspension. So as you can see,